What's up you guys, welcome to Media Blitz presents I Love Movies, our channel dedicated to the love and obsession of all things movies. I'm Jeffrey. I'm Bobby. And in this video, you saw the title, we're talking about Scream, Scream 5. 22. Scream, Scream 5. 20, 22. Scream 22. Just stay tuned. Yeah. And let's get right into the specs of this thing. The movie was written by James Vanderbilt and Guy Busick and directed by a brilliant, brilliant directing team. Forgive me if I, on the name. Um, Matt Bettinelli Open and Tyler Gillette. And this was the first film directed without the legendary horror icon Wes Craven. That's right. Love you, Wes. And starting in this movie, we have Courtney Cox. We have... David um, Arquette, we have Courtney Cox, we have Melissa Barrera, and then of course the star, which is Jenna Ortega. Yes, and you know what? The whole cast is absolutely brilliant. Very, very talented, very sexy. Um, one little asterisk I like I would like to put in there. Okay. Melissa's acting as Sam. Um, not to say anything uh, disrespectful about about uh, her acting. Okay. I, I think she was great. She she definitely um, she definitely. Um, carried the whole film. Yeah, um, she did. But in a few scenes, I just feel like um, her acting could have been a little bit stronger. The deliverance you're talking about? Yeah, the deliverance. I just okay. feel in a couple of scenes, there were times where I was really looking at Jenna Ortega's acting and really, really appreciating it. Mm -hmm. And then I saw Melissa's acting and was a little bit more on the side of Jenna's believable, believ believability. Um, okay. Melissa's just, I, I just feel like her, she just needed a little bit more. Um, this was also the first time I have ever seen her in a film or mm -hmm. anything, so I would like to see her in more projects. Um, but with that, uh, we do have a great opening scene with Jenna Ortega as Tara. And funny, and funny, we open right up to a landline call. Who has a landline phone nowadays? Do it one more time. Okay. <laughs> okay, and funny, we open right up, um, and funny, we open right up to a call to a phone to a landline phone. Now, who has a landline phone nowadays? Yeah, um, I guess they're really, really stretching and trying to stay true to that true yeah. scream opening a girl alone in a house with a landline phone. Um, to say the least, though, this film is extremely meta. Like that's the first thing that that can be said about this film, and I guess the whole franchise really. And now that I really know what that mm -hmm. term meta means, oh my god, this 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 film is extremely meta, and on so many different levels. Um, if, and the references are like seriously so in your face. Sometimes it's a little funny. It's seriously like <laughs> slapping you in the uh. face, like. Look at our reference. It's, it's it's really funny. I really like the approach they took on this movie. Yeah, there yeah. yeah, there are constant references throughout the film that we're seeing, the scenes that we're watching in the movie, and the commenting on the recent requel that we've seen, like Halloween 2018. They commented on so many recent films. It was so refreshing. It was almost like watching an episode of a TV show because of how like recent and fresh this movie felt. Mm -hmm. It was it, that was a really refreshing take on a movie. I have to say um, that was really good. Um, there were some great um, relationships mm -hmm. to the original movie um, that that they kind of brought up here. Um, they had a few characters who were tied in extremely closely to some original characters from that original Scream, which I thought was really good because it really filled these characters and it really filled out the town. It really, really made it feel really made it real and organic and a lot in the in the ways of uh, the new Halloween movies are doing. That's true. I mean. I mean, not only that, we, they did a great job in the casting and then the way that they interlace and woven these characters into each other is just phenomenal. It just makes you feel like you're there. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, now, getting on to the kills, because, hi, we're in a, we're talking about a screen movie. Yes. Um, Jesus Christ, the kills were so amped up this time. Um, again, I... I I don't want to constantly compare this movie to the new Halloween franchise, but my god, it is so brutal, it is so gory, it is so unexpectedly gory, not like anything you've ever seen in a previous Scream movie. And that was so much fun to watch, especially this being my first Scream film watching it in a theater. Yeah. It was so, so good. Like, it definitely exceeded my expectations of what they were going to do. And, um, co you know, com again, compared to what we've seen in previous films. Right. I agree. I totally agree. The killer is more amped up. They're more passionate about their killing and the way that they're definitely... They're way more brutal from what we've previously seen on the previous screen movies. And I... Mm, I can't wait. To, I can't wait 
but can't wait to for like the next movie yes. to see like because I know for sure the kills are going to be even more it's stepped step up. up. Yeah. So oh my God, they're constantly um, they're trying to outdo themselves. Yes, you can tell, and it seems like a lot of movies right now because of what's you know because horror is so ex acceptable um, on on. TV and on, on cable and on all these different platforms, it's like it's the gore factor. People going up now. Yeah, it's people. Going. Yeah, people have to keep up with that gore factor. So that was really good. And as as gory as the movie was, because this definitely was the goriest scream film that we've seen in the franchise. It was seriously the funniest scream movie that we've seen in the franchise because I was literally laughing from beginning to end and all the way through and I thought they really did a really great job at that. And you know what? It really didn't take away from. The scenes that were supposed to be scary, right. they were scary, and they had some funny stuff in between, and I, I really liked how how they bridged a lot of that stuff. I agree. I, I agree. I mean, there were certain scenes that were funny. They had they had um, a few lines that were funny, but it was the deliverance and the execution that they delivered it besides the joke that just took it. It just it just made you feel like, oh my god, like, look at this shit. It's like, all this brewing, all this killing's happening, but we can still be funny. Yeah, you know what, and um, there was a line in the movie, and I forgot kind of who said it at the moment, but um, I, th I thought it was, I, you know, I really, really appreciated it, and I felt like it really spoke to um, us hardcore fans of movies, right? Um, he said something to the effect of, you know, your, you know, our love for these original movies that made us love horror, and the fact that these movies helped bond families together, and damn anyone who fucked with these original movies, and I feel like that was speaking a lot about, um, you know, the requels and all of these remakes that are going on in Hollywood right now, and it's kind of like, you, you know, again, comparing this movie to, to the new Halloween franchise, you have fans making these movies, a lot like with this new Scream movie. You have fans making these movies who, who felt so close and connected to these films, and um, there was such a special bond with these films, and that's why I, f I really, really enjoyed um, that line in the movie. I really did. That was, that was a great dialogue in that yeah. scene, and it also foreshadows the ending of the movie, which... Without saying too much, it kind of does. It, it kind of really does. Um, there's a lot of dialogue spoken about that in the in the in the last um, scenes of the film. Um, yeah, uh, moving on to another scene um, in the film. There was, you know, they have such a way again because the film is so meta. Mm -hmm. They have a way of playing with the audience, and there was one scene in particular. They were really, really messing with the audience's um, suspense and just. Just really, just really messing with you, and I felt that that it, it paid off in such a really smart and funny way. At the end of that scene, uh, it was such a good. I, I, I can't say enough about that one. It was, it was good. It was good. The um, there is a there is a scene in the movie that I liked when Gail showed up, and it was the way that she showed up. It was an it was an authentic way that it was um, not only to cover the story, but it was to show that she's also closely connected to this. Yeah, because you know, of course, they could have had anybody cover you know, go down and cover, but, mm -hmm. you know, Gail being who she is, connected to these ghost face murders in, in Woodsboro, of course they would have her down there. So it felt like a really um, organic way to bring her in. And I felt the same way about Dewey in the sense that they, they had to go, you know, without spoiling too much, almost rope him into this situation mm -hmm. and kind of like drag him in a lot like almost Sydney is. And like without spoiling too much, like I felt like they just like, it, it worked on 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 levels that like they they were trying to pull the, the these 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 main three in you know what I mean pull them back in yeah they roped them in yeah and I mean no I agree with you and that um, also brings up our next point because this is how they this is how they brought Cindy back into the picture again in a really organic non forced way it, it was a situation where like you would see yeah okay here's this situation. Anybody involved in this situation, like I said, not trying to spoil anything, anybody involved in this situation right here right. would have came back with with the scenario going on. So it was really organic, really not forced. I thought like it, it just the way they brought these characters in, it, it, it felt right. And and in, in saying so, mm -hmm. I have to agree with a couple of videos that we saw in the way that they brought them into the film, they could have very easily not ha involved them. Right, if these iconic characters, you know, the, the main three, mm -hmm. uh, Courtney and Nev and David, right. if they didn't want to come back, I feel like this movie could have worked even without them. I would, you, how did you feel about that? I would have to, I would have to disagree just because it would, it, it would have worked, but it would have not been the same. And on that note too, it's like it's not a spoiler, but we get to see some fantastic scenes in Stu, um, Stu Mocker's old house. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. It's you know, it's not really. 
it's not really a spoiler because it was in the trailer and I can't even say like oh if you caught it in the trailer because it was so slapped yeah. in your face dead on in the trailer if you didn't if you've never seen the first movie that's why you didn't know the house but I mean yeah if you've seen the first film boom you knew what house they were in immediately and I like how they brought about the realization of how they were in the house. I love how organically they got to that house. I love how the house was involved in this whole situation. It just makes sense. The writing is so, so smart in this movie. They just, they paid special attention to these small little details. And, um, and you know what? We also get a lot of really great callbacks to the original film being in this house. A lot of the lines are kind of like, <laughs> you know, like, Again, it's so meta. It's like, hey, you remember the first movie? Remember the first movie? But they don't say that. And, they and they do that in such a natural way. It's so, so funny. I, um, personally, I think there was some... I think there was some... Um, I think some of the best scenes that happened here, it was, super, it was really super meta, really funny, and we get to see some really cool kill scenes that we've never got to see before. I agree. I think some of the best stuff happens here. Um, not the best stuff, but some of the best dialogue and scenes and action stuff happens happens um, in this sequence of the house um, or in the film in this house. And, um, and then let's, to move on a little bit, mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the reveal of the killers. Okay. I don't know if this is really a spoiler. Spoiler or not, maybe this is the only spoiler that we're going to give you guys in this video. There are two killers. Um, I was very, I have to say I was a little bit underwhelmed and almost unimpressed by the reveal of the second killer. Uh, I found, I personally, I found it a bit cliche, but I kind of see where they were going with it. Just like in the first movie. Okay. Okay, you know, that does make sense. Like, like cliche, okay, like cliched like the first movie and almost like expect the expected in that cliched yeah. sense of. That makes sense. Yes. That makes sense. Without trying to say too much, what you, the, what you just said, that, that, that does make perfect sense. Um, um, but with that being said, the reveal of the first killer, I thought was so original. It was something, again, they're constantly giving us something we've never seen in a Scream franchise before. And this was definitely something that we've never seen in a Scream franchise before, the way they revealed the first killer. Um, okay, I... Uh, okay. What? Okay. I I did like that one, but I just found it a I just found it a bit cliche. Like I just you found that cliche. Really? I just found it a little cliche just because it was. That was just personally me without giving out too much. <laughs> okay. We'll just say it like that. Okay. This is okay. I don't. I didn't find that cliche. I find I found I found that very original. I found that very ballsy of them. Um. To think outside the box? To think outside the box in that sense. Um, it was, again, this film is very like slapping you in the face as far as a horror fan goes. And as far as a, a lover of movie goes. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, it's so fucking meta. Like I cannot stop saying that. And that's literally what everybody is saying about this movie. Like I said in the beginning of this video, if there's one thing to be said about this film, it's so fucking meta mm -hmm. on so many different levels. Um, and on that, without, Without you know saying too much, without you know because anything more that we say, I think it's gonna just gonna spoil oh, yeah. spoil anything in the film. So we're kind of done on that sense. Um, but there were a, a couple of very beautiful tributes to Wes Craven. Yes, there was. Even naming a character Wes. May he rest in peace. May he Wes. rest in peace. And 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 I thought that was so great in the way they did that. Again, I, did. I keep using the word organic. The writing is so good, and, and just the tribute and the way they, they subtly gave that tribute to Wes Craven, I thought it was so beautiful. And of course they would, because, you know, th this this franchise wouldn't be... Wouldn't be... It wouldn't be what it was without Wes Craven. Exactly. And I mean, no matter what they say, this, I'm sorry, this was Wes's baby, and... This was for Wes, yeah. This was you know, for Wes. Again, Kevin Williamson, he made, he wrote an amazing script, mm -hmm. and he, he really knew what he was doing, what he wanted to do in the first film, what he wanted to do in the follow-up films, but Wes Craven just, he, he lended so much to this franchise that nobody mm -hmm. could think the way that uh, Wes Craven does. Yeah, exactly, the way he did. Um, so with that, I hope you guys like this video. I hope you guys have watched Scream 5 already, because if you haven't, go and watch it right now. What it's are you fucking, waiting for? Yeah, what are you waiting for? Go watch it. It's amazing. Um, but if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to this to this channel. Um, the button is somewhere around right. here. 
um, we rebranded the channel again yes. for probably the last time, I think. The channel is called Media Blitz. This show is called I Love Movies. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys would give this a great big like, great big thumbs up, ring the bell, push a whole bunch of YouTube buttons, and stay notified for our upcoming videos because we are doing Scream, full spoiler review. Yes. Halloween Kills, full spoiler review. And a kill count video for both of those movies, for Halloween Stay. Kills and Scream. So stay tuned, you guys. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs> Woo!